His name is Alexander Butterfield. He was the deputy assistant to President Richard Nixon. And as the surprise witness during the Watergate hearings in 1973, he changed the course of history with this moment. Mr. Butterfield, are you aware of the installation of any listening devices in the Oval Office of the President? I was aware of listening devices. Yes, sir. It was Alexander Butterfield who told Watergate investigators and the world about the existence of secret White House tapes that would ultimately expose Nixon's involvement in the Watergate plot and lead to his resignation. If there's a modern equivalent to what Alexander Butterfield did that day, it is this person, Cassidy Hutchinson, the White House aide who testified to the January 6th committee about what she saw happen inside the White House before, during, and after January 6th. Today, we learned that the similarities between Butterfield and Hutchinson are no accident. This is from the newly released transcript of Cassidy Hutchinson's closed door testimony before the January 6th committee. Here's what she said about how she ultimately made the decision to testify before the public. Quote, I started Googling, I start Googling Watergate. Like there, there has to be somebody that participated in Watergate that either had a similar job to me and had exposure. Like, how did they handle this? I didn't know that much about Watergate, but then I came across this man named Alex Butterfield, and it looked like he had a similar role and title to what I had in the White House. I found that he, a couple years ago, worked on this book with Bob Woodward, so I ordered two copies. I read it three times. He had talked about how he fought the moral struggle, where he felt like he still had to be loyal to the Nixon White House. He talked about a lot of the same things that I felt like I was experiencing. The emphasis he, Butterfield, placed on the moral questions that he was asking himself resonated with me. He was somebody who did know things and who was loyal and who had a position that required an incredible amount of trust and confidence, but he ended up doing the right thing. And it was after I read this, I was like, if I'm gonna pass the mirror test for the rest of my life, I need to try and fix some of this. Cassidy Hutchinson, wasn't being hyperbolic about the level of courage it took for her to testify that day. Today, we learned from her transcript the incredible amount of pressure that Trump world had placed on her not to answer the committee's questions and instead risk contempt of Congress in order to protect Donald Trump. Hutchinson told the committee that her Trump-funded lawyer, a man named Stefan Passantino, actively discouraged Hutchinson from telling the committee everything that she knew. At one point, Hutchinson recalls attempting to organize her thoughts by asking to look at a calendar so she could better remember what events took place and when. She says the Trump attorney, Mr. Passantino, discouraged her from trying to jog her memory. According to her testimony, he told her, I'm your lawyer. I know what's best for you. The less you remember, the better. Don't read anything to try to jog your memory. Don't try to put together timelines. That same Trump lawyer also told Cassidy Hutchinson not to tell the committee about the harrowing incident in which Trump allegedly lunged at the wheel of his SUV and at the leader of his Secret Service detail when the agent refused to take Trump to the Capitol following his speech on the ellipse on January 6th. As she told the committee, quote, I said something to Stephen like, yeah, I had this conversation with Tony Ornato, that's Trump's deputy chief of staff, when we got back from the rally that day, and Tony told me that the president tried to wrap his hands around the Secret Service agent's neck and strangle him because he wouldn't take him to the Capitol. And Stefan said, no, 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 no. I remember he like sat back in his chair and he's like, no, 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 no. We don't want to go there. We don't want to talk about that. That is the kind of legal advice that staffers, people who relied on the former president's network of legal counsel, that is the kind of advice they were getting as the January 6th committee concluded its work. And as we learned from Cassidy Hutchinson's transcript today, it wasn't just the pressure from those Trump-approved lawyers to avoid telling the committee what she knew. Hutchinson told the committee that she was also receiving offers of financial support and promises of offers for jobs, that jobs that didn't actually exist, and what she felt like was an attempt to buy her silence. But Cassidy Hutchinson did not acquiesce to the pressure or the job offers or the attempts to buy her silence. 
Instead, she sa says she found herself doing something that very few Trump aides have proved capable of or interested in over the years. She started soul searching. She started thinking about her role in President Trump's scheme and who she was becoming in the process. Quote, I was sitting on my couch in my old apartment. It looked out over the bullpen and the Navy Yard near the Nat Stadium. I remember sitting there, reading on my phone like this, glancing out the window, and I just kept thinking, oh my God, I became someone that I never thought I was going to become. That, that self-reflection, that was how Cassidy Hutchinson found the courage to ditch that Trump-backed lawyer and find new representation and testify before an audience of millions and tell the country and the world what she knew. Tonight, we received even more witness transcripts from the committee, which we will get to later on in this hour. And we are expecting the release of the committee's full January 6 report. But the testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson alone paints a damning picture of how Trump and his allies may have pressured witnesses in an attempt to obstruct the investigation. And her testimony further shows us the extent to which those witnesses may have felt Trump himself was running the pressure campaign. As Hutchinson told the investigators, she was nervous in her first interviews with the committee because, quote, I almost felt like at points Donald Trump was looking over my shoulder. <laughs> 